to me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that I shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. How is a salaried man to bless a corporation to grow and raise his personal worth? How can a business operator keep his business to stay firm as a rock amidst the winds and waves as he contributes to society and seeks the welfare of his staff? Welcome to our program series, Musings of the Workplace, and here Dr. Liu share the way to handle difficult situations at the workplace. I'm just working for my own keep. That is a pet phrase tossed around by many people. Do you see anything amiss here? How would such self-positioning go on to impact our mindsets, career development, or even our lives? We invite Dr. Liu to share how she understands this meme. Dear friends, Shalom. The topic I'm going to share with you today is a rich earner or an owner. As a workplace person, you will be aware that workers doing practically the same type of work in the same office can display immensely different attitudes. Basically, workplace people may be put into two broad categories according to their work attitudes and philosophies. Category one, this includes workers who work to rule and not beyond, or as the Englishman put it, keep their noses clean. And yes, they are likely to finish their jobs on time or may ask for some extension once in a while. People in this category are known to show their diligence with their bosses are around, but likely to slack when they are not. They will focus on finishing whatever is required of them, but no further. For example, how they could optimize the workflow or go for higher quality or quantity of output. Their modus operandi stays as old as the hues. In short, theirs is neither to go creative and lead the trend, nor to outdo the average man. It is in the blood of such a person to shift the blame to someone else, find reasons to justify himself when a job cannot be done on time or runs into some unexpected circumstances. Rarely would he carry out any form of introspection, much less look for reasons that could possibly be traced back to himself. A typical rejoinder to any query over his work running past the deadline uh, would go something like this. Uh, Mr. A uh, has not responded to my email last week, full stop. Or... Oh, I would not be able to proceed to the next step unless Mr. So-and-so sends me the information. Or how about this takes the kick? Oh, I must talk to my assistant, Mr. A, the guy working under me on this. He's not doing his work properly and so on and on. He would rather spend two hours defining why he is not lifting a finger if a colleague were to turn to him for urgent help. Nor would he help out that poor chap when he could have done that in an hour. And what's his reason? Oh, why should I? What has that got to do with me? It's none of my business. Such work attitudes can be summed up as a wage earner spirit. This is a passive state of mind. And the philosophy is, well, I'm just working for someone, a witch earner, got no choice, man. Category two contrasts sharply against the first category of workers. Now, people will drive themselves to work with great passion and sense of responsibility. They will always give it their best shot, move along with the times, and leave no stone unturned to complete their mission well. Whether the boss is looking their way or not, and in good time too. Yes, Category 2 people will go all the way to figure out what has gone wrong, 
seek help, and even look around for proposals to lick the problem the moment they run into difficulties. This is how their replies would be like. Oh, I called out Mr. A at once when nothing was forthcoming after texting him two days ago. Now, meanwhile, I have been working all the time to sort this out with him, which I'm confident will be settled by tonight at the latest. Or maybe the message I conveyed was not clear, which caused Mr. A into thinking that the required data and info was too massive and complicated to give me within the limited time. However, after explaining, I have already received the required info from Mr. A, and yes, I'm working on it right now. Or it could be just as simple as this. Oh, it's something that I have overlooked. Give me some time to fix that. I will inform you when everything falls into place. It is this sense of ownership burning in their hearts that inspires such employees to treat work assigned to them as their very own. They take the initiative to carry out their assignments with sale, move along with the times to clinch excellence, and come up with creative ideas as they blaze along the way. They go beyond the core required of them on their own and gun their way to fulfill their ideals and sense of social commitment. These people are certainly the bedrock that holds the company together in times of challenges and ensures that it moves along and grows healthily through thick and thin. They are also the ones every company is eager to engage. I'm sure that the differences between these two categories of employees should be clear to you by now. So which category are you in? The one who works with a wage earner mentality or that with an ownership mindset? Do you think that it's all about others when it comes to winning? Or is it your firm belief that you too can join their ranks one day? May this truth resonate within the hollow of the hearts of workplace people like us. Every pick and well that we have gone through, every situation, be it sweet or bitter, can be turned into opportunities for us to do better. A witch earner minded guy leads a life that is mediocre at best, with nothing exciting to speak of. Whereas he who works with a sense of ownership has much inspiration and vibrancy spilling over and sharing it with those around him. So which side do you want to be on? Every company welcomes and loves to retain staff with a sense of ownership. They know that employees like this will always have the company at heart and are eager to build a positive image for the company he's serving. He will also work towards a workplace that is exuding fragrance from positive energies as he helped the group to move towards an Ivy lead enterprise. Now, where is the company going to source such workers from? Luck of the draw? No way. How do we build up a culture of ownership? Firstly, the company can single out suitably qualified and capable recruits who are aligned with the cultural values of the company. Working skills may be claimed from their CV, curriculum vitae, educational background, uh, working experience, uh, pro completed projects, work performance, and so on. The core values of recruits may be ascertained through the responses to our questions on situational behavior at the interview. For example, we can pose questions like, what, what was your worst fiasco or failure at the workplace and how do you think you can do better the next time? Now, two, what was your greatest success at the workplace? How was that achieved? And three, which are the areas at work that you need to put most effort in? 
Now, questions like these are designed to understand the candidate's response in face of failure. Do you try to shift blame to others or do you take up personal responsibility for the failure? We can find out if he is someone who attributes success to his own efforts or to the entire team. Now, does he have the spirit to excel, look up and move constantly towards progress? This will improve our chances in landing recruits who will do the company good. Secondly, we can integrate ownership spirit and ideas of creative transformation into our core values and principles or guidelines of the company and strengthen it through work and training sessions and practices across the board. In spreading the ownership spirit values across departments and generations, we can still plug into the CTMBA model to create corporate culture values, train and brief them, share the applications in regular meetings, inculcate and discuss through the cultural team building activities, and use the comprehensive three C's appraisals. Thirdly, the PDCA model can be implemented to empower every staff member to carry out their work and complete projects with high efficiency and effectiveness without the need for boss to micromanage the process. In this acronym, the four letters stand for P is planning, do is doing, C is checking, and A is appraisal, respectively. This is similar to the PDCR model in the ISO, International Management System Standards. P, planning. A Chinese adage goes, plants in spring, bumper harvest bring. There is a need to set up the annual goals and targets when the new year rings in, along with working plans on their implementation. The entire team will be involved in discussions on the plans and duty assignments for every piece of work and project. The detailed chart showing the tasks will then be put up after coming to a consensus on the working plans with the time frame of every step along the way and names of responsible staff clearly spelled out. The duty and responsibility of the boss is to ink the final decision following discussions and ensure that everything would be done as scheduled. D. Doing. Ensure that everything is done to the plans as discussed, including the duties and deliverables. No one is to keep silent in the face of difficulties, nor is he to toast them over to the boss without giving any thought at all. Now, instead, he should do his homework first in all honesty. That is, tap on his own knowledge and experience to collate related information, carry out analysis, and examine issues and possible solutions from various perspectives. This is a sense of ownership in action. No one should be waiting for the next regular meeting to discuss the matter. Now, precious time will have been lost by then. C. Checking. These are to be carried out during regular meetings. And monitoring should proceed until the project is completed. Regular meetings enable the stakeholders to instill, foster, affirm, and show a spirit the course as they ensure the project is on schedule. They have to reinforce the message that no one is working alone. Everyone will be there to provide cheer, mutual support, and encouragement should some dark clouds float into sun. A. Appraisal. These are usually carried out as the year comes to a close. A comprehensive appraiser should be carried out across the board by oneself, by colleagues related to the work, and from top down and so on. Coverage should go beyond work to include the performance of staff in espousing core corporate values, interpersonal relationships, 
and work achievements throughout the year in terms of the three C's, the convictions, the character, and the competence. Now, above all, bosses are to follow up with employees and help empower them to better focus on their own strengths and work on their weakness going forwards. Corporate atmospheres, strengthening into harmonious production teams and essence in the sense of ownership, will improve over time as the organization commits itself to apply the CTMBA and PDCA modules diligently. Micromanagement by bosses on their staff will be on its way up. I look forward to the day when every staff is at home with and applies these modules at their workplace. Going along these guidelines, and you will witness how core values, cultural conduct, working attitudes, moving slowly but steadily forward. At the same time, objective of staff and company will confront as everyone looks up to ownership with pride and the potential of the company powers it towards the next peak. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Every one of us is made uniquely with true worth. Adopting the scornful manner of a wage earner to speak of our labor stems from our failure to recognize our own worth. Such self-deprecation is reflected in the passivity and inefficiency with which we carry out our work. As shared by Dr. Liu, Workplace people may be broadly grouped into wage earners and those dubbed as owner workers. The former group is passive and works for his keep. In contrast, the latter group is positive, enterprising, and eager to pursue excellence. It is not just the drive of money that keeps them going, but goes beyond to sharpen and uplift their skills, character, and even the willingness to serve society. Yes, they would be true gems in the companies they serve. We, too, can help ourselves and those reporting to us become workplace folks with ownership spirit and spur team members and company on to continue charging ahead by way of the CTMBA and the PDCA models. Did you proclaim yourself as a wage earner in the past? If so, it is my hope that today's sharing will jolt you up to cherish the values of yourself and that of your life from this moment onwards. Find out the mission and calling in your life as you work actively toward its fruition with heads held high. Before I close the session, let us go through the following questions together. Number one, are you a wage earner or an owner worker? Give some examples to illustrate your attitude towards your work. Number two, what are the differences between these two mindsets as set forth by Dr. Liu? How would they be impacting their personal development and the company? Number three, are you willing to uplift yourself? How do you plan to start up your own engine? I look forward to your sharing. May we sharpen one another and achieve excellence at the workplace. Continue to discover insightful reflections on the workplace, inspiring you to navigate challenges and cultivate growth. Get a copy of Musings of the Workplace today. The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.